So Kelly and I have been in the Rocky Mountain for the last week or so over Labor Day. We had a funeral to go to, which was a worthwhile reason to come back to the Rockies. And on the way home from Powell and Cody, I figured I had about one shot to stop by Ingalls Coat Shop. And Dave graciously said, sure, come on in and foul up my morning's product <laughs> productivity. <laughs> and so I've been enjoying very much. Kelly and I have been in here looking his place over and it's spectacular. And maybe the most amazing thing I've seen so far is this table saw. Dave, tell us what we're looking at here, would you? Well, this is a 1908 Bay and Egan made in Cincinnati, Ohio. Sliding table saw has dual 16 inch blades on it. Hold that. I don't know if that registered for you. It barely registers for me and I'm standing here by it. There are two 16 inch blades. A rough cut, a cross cut, and a fine cut that he can roll up here on a 10 horse motor. A 10 horse motor. And anyhow, sorry, back to you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's kind of the, the king of my equipment here in the shop. It's a phenomenally accurate saw. And he's, instead of sliding a miter gauge through the slot on a, my unisaws, which I see now are Weak saws, little sister, second cousins to a real table saw. <laughs> this, yeah. how does this work? Look at that. This is a sliding table. And it has an adjustable miter fence on here that's indexed right on the table where you can split degrees to the half degree if you have to. Wow. So anyhow, in a shop that's full of antique tools to make antique horse-drawn vehicles, this was made in 1908, right at the end of the horse-drawn era, right? I mean, horsepower and horse sense all went away by the time this was made. Yeah, by 15 to 20 was a real decline in horse-drawn. Yeah, interesting. You know, I, I think Winston Churchill mourned the transition from horsepower to internal combustion as sort of the loss of part of our humanity somehow. The industrial era. The industrial era. So anyway, I'm gonna walk you through here. Dave's walked me through through here once already. I've burned, probably burned an hour of his day and I could easily trash the whole thing if he doesn't sweep me out of here. But he's got a big project coming. I'm not going to spoil that for him. I don't know how he's going to show the world what he's going to do with a really big and really old logging appliance when horses had to pull logs. And so keep an eye out for that on his channel if you haven't discovered Ingalls Coach Shop, then you're missing out on something really worthwhile. So Dave, if you don't mind, I'm going to walk through here with the camera and maybe quiz you a little bit about some of the things that I just don't understand, but I wish that I did. Absolutely. So this right here, my friends, is one of the coolest things. This is a 10-foot diameter steel tire that's going to go on wooden wheels that he's going to make, because whether you know it or not, earlier he built borax wagons out of this shop, and borax wagons were heavy, heavy freight. Like, anyhow, that's worth watching. But these are going to be bigger wheels yet. This one on a logging arch. Now a logging arch in the Pacific Northwest earlier was a wheeled mechanism that would be put behind a cat because earlier caterpillars, you know, bulldozers didn't have the winches on them that they have now. And so it was a way to get lift or lead on the front of a log, get the nose of a log off, off the ground so you can move it across the ground and reduce the friction. So think of the wagon wheel that's going to go inside that wagon tire. Look at these hubs. This was made by Holt Company, which was the parent precursor grandfather of Caterpillar Company. So I can't wait. Dave, I can't wait till you get on this. It might be worth a trip back just to watch some part of that. <laughs> so you'll come back and set tires. You know I might. <laughs> the invitation's there. Oh. So this is a cool thing. This has been in the same family for four generations. Four generations. Four generations. He's had it in here a long time, but it's worked its way up to the front of the list. We don't need to talk about how long it's been in here, do we? <laughs> but it takes time to make these things happen. And he is perfectly restoring something that was in a Montana family four generations ago. And he is building from scratch the canopy. What do you call the bonnet? It's an extension top. An extension top, which great, great, great granddad threw away as superfluous. But the people that own it now want it back to its original condition. Who else can do that, right? That's awesome. Nice. That's a nice sander. Horse is that thing? Five horse. Holy smokes. Ten inch. It's a hog. It's a hog. <laughs> you can do more damage with that in two seconds than you can fix in the rest of the day. Yeah, huh? Take your skin right off. Oh. Your bones to be 
beautiful band song. We all bender. Mm-hmm. Tired, tired, just a bender. Tired bender. Ring bender. So we may not get in there, but the, your floor cone, is it right that the angle on that floor cone is the angle of the rings that would go on the wooden hubs? Is that is that the same angle? And if so, was that intentional or just? It's it's a rare occasion that you have tapered hub bands mm-hmm. because when they go on on a taper, they come off. They come off easy, very easy. instantly off. Yeah, as soon as they move, they're loose. Sure. So most of the time, a mandrel that cone, the purpose of that is just to allow you the variety of diameters. Yeah. But you're still setting the bands straight. Okay. So you're flipping it over on the cone yeah. and take cleaning up your work and getting on the horn. Yeah. Wow. There are a few wagon hubs that will have tapered hub bands, yeah. but very few. Interesting. Interesting. And that's your heating. That is actually my hub boring machine. That's that, your hub that's boring. That's my machine. tire alignment machine for wagon wheels. Oh my gosh! After the whole wheel is built, the last thing I do is bore the center bearing bushing mm-hmm. that, that runs on the axle. So that faceplate there trues up the wheel, then I bore that center bearing called the boxing true with the tire so that that wheel runs, the wheel runs true. No kidding. That's the alignment of the way you do. So talk to me about the, the tilt from center. I, when I, that book, The Wheelwright Shop, mm-hmm. I got a partial education about which way that camber went so, to, so that it would tend to hold the wagon upright and not just the wheels collapse going out or something. What's the, what's the rationale yeah. on that? that that we call dish faces out of the buggy. So it's like, it's like taking, I've tried to explain it. If you take a paper, uh, paper cup, uh-huh. you know, the old style mm-hmm. it'd be in a cone. Mm-hmm. If you took that cone and loaded something on the point of that, that paper cup is fairly strong mm-hmm. because of the cone. Mm-hmm. The more you flatten that out, mm-hmm. the less strength is there. Mm-hmm. So the wheel is built in this cone so when the axle is carrying the load is in a sharp turn or on a side hill pushing against the center of that cone that cone keeps the wheel from collapsing the tension of the tire is holding that cone where it has to be and you'd have to stretch the tire to push that thing out slick yeah slick so that cone that dish is for side stress to stabilize that wheel all right so that's a cutter Mm-hmm. Sheer. Yeah. Will that sheer angle iron or just flat? Just flat. Okay. They make a little sheer angle. They do. What's that? Rubber, rubber tire machine. Huck. So when I put hard rubber tire on wheels, this machine is what is, assembles the hard rubber onto the wheel. Huh. Hard rubber on that one. Right. That's right. Okay. This is a hay button. Mm-hmm. 160. I'm a fan of hay buttons. <laughs> <laughs> My other one is also. It, does, it doesn't have the. Oh, the, big, the big one with the clip worn in, there's a hay button. All these jaws, I have all the jaws too. Really? That will grasp your piece of round stock, run it down. If you're going to make a really long rivet, mm-hmm. clamp it in there and upset your head. Slick. It's a rivet upsetter. Mm-hmm. So, anyhow, I've just got to get out of here. Kelly and I stopped in. Uh, Diane and Dave welcomed us graciously into their shop. It is a memorable place and uh, perhaps the most stunning accomplishment that's in here for me to get my hands on is this wheel off one of those borax wagons that he's made and he has a full video record of that on his channel Ingalls Coach Shop you ought to check that out if you're interested in how something like this including the hub which he turned on his South Bend lathe 
including making the spokes and the fellows and the tire and shrinking it on and all of it. Where else are you going to go to see something like that? But in any case, thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.